Hi everyone, I'm Nathan from theebookreader.com. I'm going to go ahead and give you guys an updated review of the Nook HD Plus today. So I originally reviewed this tablet back in November when it first came out. And then this past week, Barnes & Noble decided to go ahead and uh, issue a firmware update to go uh, add Google Play to the Nook HD Plus. So I'm going to give you an updated review with uh, Google Play. So it's basically the same device. I mean, all the stuff is the same as it was before, basically. Except now we have access to uh, the Google Marketplace and Google Apps. So uh, I'm not going to cover a lot of the details that I covered in the original review. I'll just leave that right here and also have the video with that covers a lot of the Nook features, the reading features, and all the Nook software features. Basically what I'm going to focus on today is showing you guys what has changed. So first off, um, like I said, we got Google Play access on here. So what that does is it lets us download uh, music, apps, uh, videos from Google. You can even download ebooks from Google if you want. So that's probably kind of a concession Barnes & Noble had to make uh, getting the Google App Store on here. But uh, so yeah, you got everything on here that you would normally have at another tablet. Uh, obviously not all the apps are going to be compatible just because the Nook doesn't have a camera. Uh, it's one of the few tablets you're going to find without a front camera or a rear camera. So that's uh, one of the uh, things to consider if you're thinking about getting this tablet. Uh, otherwise, I haven't had any problem installing apps. Um, I've got a whole bunch installed here. Like I said, you can install uh, even the Kindle app. You can install the Kobo app, with alternate reading apps. So basically, Barnes & Noble has really opened up the functionality of this tablet by uh, adding the Play Store and all the Google apps. So it also comes with YouTube, and we got Play Magazines, and Video, and Google+, Gmail. So we've got all this stuff now. We've got Google Maps, Play Music, Play Books, and Google Earth. And uh, one of the things that has been replaced, uh, the default web browser has been replaced with Google Chrome. Um, I'm probably one of the few people who's not too happy with that. I kind of like the Nooks. Uh, regular browser. It had some cool features like uh, you could save pages for offline reading and you could um, have this have this little uh, reading view that you tap right down here and it got a reading view which was kind of cool so I I'm kind of actually disappointed with that because I've been using uh, Chrome for ages and I'm actually kind of not liking it anymore just because of the bare bones features. Um, I kind of I'd actually like to see the Barnes & Noble bring the uh, default browser back. Uh, but anyway, moving on, let me go ahead and show you uh, what else has changed here. So basically, this is a look at the Nook's home screen. And you'll notice when I hit this button that I get different options for different actions. And it's because I have installed a couple of different uh, launchers. So if you don't want the Nook uh, home screen, you can actually just install uh, another Android um, uh, launcher. And then you can go ahead and customize it differently. So you'll have like your app drawer over here. Uh, might look a little bit more familiar familiar to other Android tablets out there, and so um, you can add the widgets. Uh, so like here's the little uh, widgets. So you can actually have those on your Barnes and Noble home screen now. So that's one of the new features included with this update is the Barnes and Noble home screen can have widgets now. It didn't used to have the widget feature, but now if you hold down right here, we've actually got the category over here for widgets, and you've got you know the usual. Uh, Android 4.0 type of widgets because that's what uh, is running underneath this skin is Android 4.0 on the uh, Nook, uh, Nook HD and Nook HD Plus. So another uh, alternate launcher I tried was Nova Launcher so uh, you can go ahead and customize it to your liking. Uh, that's one of the cool things uh, with this update and you can go ahead and you can have a dock bar down here and of course you can get to your apps this way. Um, so I'm kind of partial to the Barnes & Noble home screen. One thing that the Barnes & Noble home screen doesn't have is folders. So like this home screen right here, you can group all your Google apps together. You can group all your games together. You can create folders. Uh, that's one thing that the uh, Barnes & Noble home screen does lack. Um, it actually works in landscape mode and portrait mode, so you can switch these around. And I've noticed the spacing is a little bit better than it used to be. Um, so yeah, these uh, have profiles. Uh, you can set up different adult profiles, child profiles. Child profiles don't work with like side-loaded content and there's just a few apps, but uh, you, if you uh, want to use this for uh, multiple people, you can set up different profiles, have completely different uh, home screen set up for your profiles, different content. So uh, that's one of the uh, things I covered in the other review. Uh, so let me show you this right here. This is a pretty cool feature with the Nook because it has this carousel feature, which uh, the Kindle uh, is made popular. But uh, with the Nook, you can actually get rid of it. You can modify it. What I like about it is, um, is you can just show books like I have right now. You can exactly show what kind of stuff you want to show up on there. So if you put apps on here, uh, one of the things I noticed with this new update is that the uh, Google Play apps aren't optimized for uh, being displayed on the screen right here. So they're kind of fuzzy. It's the same exact sort of thing with Kindle when you sideload apps. Uh, the uh, icons are kind of fuzzy. So yeah, I've noticed that on here as well. Another thing you'll notice is there's this little N icon next to some apps. Uh, like right up in the top corner. So those are your Nook apps. If you go to the app drawer on your Nook home screen, it'll take you 
to the app drawer here and all the ones with the little an icon in the corner are the Barnes and Noble Nook apps so the Barnes and Noble Nook app store is still available and open and you can download apps from there and then, then the apps you get from Google will just uh, be regular looking apps they don't have the icon up there for the Nook affiliation so back to the home screen I'm gonna go ahead and set this as default if you want to change those you can go back into the settings for the apps and clear defaults if you wanted to say uh, make the end button go to uh, like Nova Launcher every time so uh, even when you're using the other launchers, one thing I wanted to note is the Nook interface remains the same. So you kind of have the different look for the settings menu. It has the so like normal Android tablets sort of have a black and blue feel to them. This uh, obviously has its own sort of uh, layout, and also we've got the different sort of button layout because uh, with the Nook it doesn't have these standard uh, Android buttons down here. We've got this uh, button right here which brings up your recent apps list. So that remains the same as it was before. Um, and when you have the option, there's a back button over here, and then we've got the search button right here. Uh, so then obviously your Nook button is the home button so when you want to go home so it's just a little bit different than a typical Android tablet okay so we can go in and change the background we can use live backgrounds if you it's the same with all the launchers if you hold long press on the home screen you'll bring up the options so we can go into wallpapers change the different wallpapers I was using this live wallpaper earlier and it uh, it doesn't seem to lag at all it's pretty smooth actually so one odd thing that I had noticed with doing this review is uh, when I reviewed the N2A cards for the Nook Tablet HD Plus, um, this particular game um, did not work well with the uh, Nook stock software. It actually works totally fine and steers perfectly well. So I think this was a good move on Barnes & Noble's part. I mean. Uh, they just need to make sure that their content is front and center on here. They still got their shop icon. Uh, you can go in and buy your uh, content from Barnes & Noble. Like I said, they still have their app store open. You can still get apps from them, even though they uh, are uh, adding, have added the Google app store on here. But So it's just more options, basically. You've got more options through Google. you got the Play Music, uh, the Play Books. It's probably not a huge deal with the Play Books on here because these uh, books are actually pretty limited. I mean, you can't add sideloaded content to Google's uh, app or anything. But uh, so, I mean, I, I, honestly, I like Nook's app better. So that's one thing Barnes & Noble has done well. I mean, the reading app has good features and it uh, has good presentation. You can sideload ebooks onto here, uh, EPUB ebooks. So, I mean, uh, it's got the animated page turns and it's got the dual column uh, landscape mode, which is uh, definitely a nice uh, way to read in landscape mode on the bigger screen with the HD Plus here. And it's got the uh, usual on screen features, dictionary, highlights, notes. So as far as that goes, I mean, Barnes & Noble just needs to make sure that they keep their uh, content front and center and then uh, continue to go with this open approach where you can use the uh, Play Store and it just adds a whole lot more functionality to your tablet because that was the biggest negative in my initial review of the Nook HD Plus was just the other lack of apps available. So, I mean, when you have the option of the Google Play Store, you can get all the apps you want basically. So then it just adds a whole lot more functionality to the tablet. And uh, so, I mean, it's just a whole better option as far as... Uh, Android tablets are concerned and since the screen is so good on this one and the price is low I mean it's a pretty good move by BNN. So here's a look at some of the Google apps that now come preloaded on here so there's uh, before you just had this one free app in the Nook store uh, for maps and honestly I mean no offense to developers but it was a pretty awful app uh, but so now we've got Google apps on here you've also got uh, you've got Google Earth for a 3D look so we've got a lot more uh, features overnight the Nook has just become a lot more proper tablet before I really had a hard time calling it a tablet just because it had so few options and f so few apps available now we've got like the whole gambit of apps available to it so it's a lot more uh, well-rounded tablet so basically so far I haven't had any issues with the Nook apps and the Google apps not playing well together it's like the Google apps want to update your Nook apps so like some of these were actually Nook apps at one point like Pandora but Google wanted to update it to the newer version so then it got rid of the N icon and it updated it to the newer uh, latest version which isn't available apparently in the Google App Store so uh, the quadrant score on this thing was just a shade over 3000 so at the home screen you still got your Nook category in here your whole Nook section for all your books and your magazines and all your uh, content is organized in here you can create custom shells and then we've got your side loaded files down here and screenshots so, uh, well, I'm basically going to go ahead and wrap up this review right here. Uh, check out theebookreader.com. Like I said, I have the review from this tablet from a hardware perspective. I just wanted to cover sort of the new software uh, with the Play Store on board and all the new apps and 
uh, content available. So uh, check out theebookreader.com and thank you for watching.